Bam, 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 Mr. Stevie's Tall Tale Toys. No, that, oh, that's not right either. So this episode of Mr. Stevie's Tall Toy Tales, I said it, that was a pretty good one, right? Yeah, um, this episode is has a very distinguished and distinct British flavour about it. Hence my uh, celebratory 40 years anniversary Ipswich Town UEFA Cup winners t-shirt. Yes, go Rose. And my um, cup of, oh, piping hot English tea. Although, yes, I know this is a Starbucks mug, but there we are, I love both my homes. So anyway, this episode, as I said, is all about Action Man and Atom Alpha Teens on Machines. Uh, two very big toy brands in the uh, 90s and 2000s in England and Europe and, and certainly Latin America. Many of you may not know much about it, so hopefully this will prove as a, uh, as a little bit of an education for you. So. Let the lesson begin. Right, in you come, class. Quickly, quickly. No, nope, Jenkins, not at the back. Who comes to the front, so I keep an eye on you, my lad. That's right. OK, so today's lesson is all about Action Man, the greatest hero of them all. But before we get there, oh, we have to go back to those Americans again in 1964 when they invented G.I. Joe. 12-inch action figure, took the world by storm. Incredible. But do not fear, in 1966... Paladoy brought Action Man to Britain. Hurrah! Fantastic. And it was all based upon military figures at the beginning. I remember my cousin James having this wonderful contraption here and continued military for a number of years. But of course, we Brits had to change it a little bit and we introduced sports stars. Soccer. Hmm? Soccer? What's that? No, football is what you mean. And football and even cricket. Fantastic. So that, that continued for a number of years. Then in 1982... 12 inch was a little bit big for all of us, so we all went smaller to three and three quarter inch. Those Americans brought out G.I. Joe, and we had no idea still what that was, so we brought out Action Force. Three and three quarter inch figures, fantastic, 1982. Then they kind of fizzled away for a little bit, unfortunately, and the kids played with other things. I don't know what, I wasn't a child in those days. But there we are, but back in 1993, Action Man returned, triumphant in his new extreme sports missions. He was part spy, part extreme hero, part, I don't know, everything and anything. That's the wonderful thing about Action Man. Ah, but this time we had a really cool hero. I love his hair. I wish I could get mine like that, but I'm bald, completely bald. That was Mr. X, no, Dr. X in 1993 was his nemesis. Fantastic. So there we are, we had 1982, we moved into 1993, the extreme era. Fantastic. That went on for a number of years. And then in 2005, we went small again. We got rid of Action Man and looked at what he was like before he was, when he was younger. Youngsters like you. No, not you, Jenkins. No one wants to be like you. Fantastic. Atom. In 2005. Fantastic. Went to four inches. Lots of vehicles. Lots of action. Incredible. So there's the brief history of Action Man, born from G.I. Joe. Don't tell the Americans. 1982, 1993, 2005. Fantastic. But on this particular episode, we're going to be looking at, yes, the period of Mr. Stevie, which was from 1999 to 2005. Now, I will pass it over to him to talk about the stuff that he did and the stuff that he's got and all that other kind of stuff. G Jenkins, will you stop it? Leave her alone. OK, just to be clear, um, back in the day, I was not part of the product design team for Action Man, but instead I was part of the uh, team that developed all the packaging, all the branding and all the style guides. Here you see everybody that was involved in Action Man, product design, graphic designers, engineers, uh, marketers, all that. Uh, big hats off to everybody. So this episode is dedicated to all of them. Love you all. Miss you all. So what does this packaging, branding and style guide thing mean, Steve? Well, primarily it is taking the fantastic products that the team had developed and putting them in a box. Very simple. But then more importantly, explaining and energizing and enthusing the kid and the parent about how to play with it. What's the uh, what's the action? What's the story? What's the mission? What's what, what is Action Man doing and how can you be part of it? And we worked on this mantra of always delivering a story in a box. So to be able to deliver our mantra, it really wasn't a question of putting a Action Man logo on a cardboard box and saying, there you go, that's it. No, it was about creating a suite of assets like these incredible illustrations that are so 2000. Um, but these would be everywhere. We'd use them for posters and cross sales. We'd use them on packaging um, everywhere. They were a really, really big asset for us. Um, another vital part of Action Man and telling that story in a box was toy photography. You know, every pack would have photography on the back. We would spend a lot of time and money building practical sets and getting all the lighting right. We would use a little bit of post uh, Photoshop here and there. Um, thank goodness for motion blur and, and glows and, and lens flares. Goodness me, discovering those in 2000 was a great thing. But uh, I really, really miss the days of, of toy photography. And uh, um, I actually remember one story we had. I was 
building one of these or having one of these sets built and we used a uh, little shop, little model shop at, who was actually located in Pinewood Studios where they filmed a lot of the, or if not all of the sequels uh, for Star Wars. And uh, I visited them as they were building it and uh, I saw in the corner they had all this sort of chocolatey brown sludgy stuff. And I was like, oh, what, what are you doing there? And they were saying, oh, we're actually working on the new Willy Wonka, uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film that um, Tim Burton's doing. It's on set at the moment and we've been charged with making the chocolate river, the chocolate waterfall that you see in Willy Wonka's factory. And they said, we've never had a tougher job to get the right viscosity is absolutely incredible. So they took me on a tour of the uh, Willy Wonka set, which is really cool uh, where that massive waterfall was. Um, so that was a good time. Yeah, they built a really good set. And um, yeah, I really kind of miss those hands on days. Um, I enjoy the the practical stuff, and you know, in in some ways, this is almost like a uh, I wouldn't say a grandfather, maybe a godfather of the uh, of today's incredible toy pick um, community. We didn't just rely on packaging to tell the Action Man story. We had a lot of DVDs that we produced. We had um, video games, but probably the most impactful and certainly the most memorable were the Action Man TV commercials. Those adverts blended live action with toy cuts and they were like mini 30 second TV shows. They were really, really incredible. And I know a lot of people have a lot of heart for them. So let's check one of those out now. Only one man has the speed to stop Dr. X and his deadly bomb. Grand Prix Racer Action Man runs into action. He gears up with real Grand Prix engine sounds. Monstrous madman! Then firing the secret missile, he downs the deadly dog. You're grounded, X. Action Man Grand Prix Racer with real racing sounds. These TV ads were so popular that uh, we actually asked TV viewers what they would like to see happen at the end. You know, Action Man was kind of defeated Dr. X and it was up to us, you, the kids, to write in or telephone in to say how you would like that story to end. And this is the uh, the end result. <laughs> Says a lot about our viewers. Fantastic. A year ago, a mysterious island surfaced capable of destroying the world. The evil Dr. X was in control and only one man could stop him. Action Man. Through sweltering jungles, over frozen wastes, across land, sea, and sky has bloodthirsty monsters by day and by night. Action Man has not stopped in his pursuit of Dr. X. Finally, he has hunted him down, and now he will be destroyed. The final fight. It's time to finish this for good with my awesome Mega Punch. Uh, I'll stop you with Power Claw. <laughs> or Buzzsaw. Neither, thanks, X. Action Man, the greatest hero of them all. Save me! Should Action Man try to save Dr. X? You voted, and you decided. Dr. X is no more. The world is safe again. Action Man, final combat. That's right, the viewers voted <laughs> for Action Man to let Dr. X fall to his demise. <laughs> wow. On a more celebratory note, 2006 saw the 40th anniversary of Action Man and we as a team decided to hold an art exhibition. Action Man 4040 was held in at the Blink Gallery up in London, and we invited 40 designers and artists and toy customizers, such as uh, Michael Lau, Eric So, Designers Republic, to take a naked 1966 Action Man and customize it, create something incredible with it. So we took the Blink Gallery, we decked it out, we donned it with Action Man, we pulled it all together, we had um, DJs and there was press there, and uh, some of the submissions were really, really cool. So I found some of the submissions, dug them out, and I'd love to share them with you now. So take a look. If you want to find out more about Action Man 4040 and see all of the custom figs, then check out Clutter Magazine, who are our main sponsor for the event back in the day. Um, they still have their special edition magazine available for digital viewing and download. So just follow the link you see on the screen. So while Action Man 4040 exhibition was a celebration of the quintessential 12 inch action figure that had been around for 40 years, hence the name, um, things were changing. You know, uh, tastes were changing, generations were changing. You know, when Action Man first came out in 66 and kind of went through, you know, kind of into sort of like 
early mid 80s and it kind of went away and it came back in what I call the extreme era in 93 and now in 2005 six around that time um, you know 15 years later tastes were changing you know action man traditionally was always a 30 something early 30s kind of singular hero um, the tastes were much more about uh, teens and younger and, and prequels for for want of a better word if you look around the the, the pop culture landscape at that time we had the Star Wars prequels uh, Batman Begins was just starting the retelling of heroes origins was very much in vogue so a decision was made to kind of like let's what happened with what 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 was Action Man like when he was a teenager with his friends and how did he get to become the man he, he became? So we introduced um, Atom, Alpha Teens on Machines, which was basically a story of Axel Manning, pre-Action Man, with his friends and how he learned his skills. So that ushered in a new um, era of, of TV shows. We had two series of um, 26 episodes of each with uh, SIP Animation and Jetix. And that obviously ushered in a new range of toys and the toys went down to kind of a four inch scale, lots of vehicles, lots of features, lots of stuff to do, world playing rather than that kind of story in a box. So uh, let me take you on a journey and show you what Atom was all about. <laughs> If you're a fan of the Clone Wars, Mandalorian, Shawshank Redemption, Highlander and Spongebob and you manage to see some of these Atom episodes, you may recognize a few familiar voices. At its heart, Atom was a four inch figure and vehicle line full of good guys, bad guys, cool accessories, mini vehicles, uh, big vehicles, souped up vehicles. It was very techy. It was very street. It was bright. It was colorful. It was full of graphics. We made a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, what I have in my collection is predominantly the figures. So let me take you through some of them and uh, introduce you to the characters. So this is Sam's atom lunchbox and he kept all his figures in it he loved atom when he was about two or three three yeah, so it's 2006 or so uh this is king king is this guy is a good guy the so the heart of gold every every figure had a a helmet and, and did have feet <laughs> obviously sam's been playing with him um this is hawk so he is your quintessential obnoxious self-centered character good guy um air ace look at those tram lines vanilla ice very cool he was probably my favorite figure just because of the colorways um, came with a jet wing. Every figure had a hole on the back so you could interchange your accessories. Um, yeah, the colorways on Hawk was really cool. I liked him. I had a soft spot for him. Um, did come with a with a projectile launcher, which obviously Sam lost. Wrecker. So Wrecker is the bad guy in season two, the part of the new teens. He is King's counterpart. Um, you know, both big muscles. Uh, I think they use similar parts as well. Stingfly. Stingfly is Hawk's counterpart and part of the Mutines against the Atom team, um, clearly inspired by Bumblebees. Uh, he comes again, as you'd expect, with his flying backpack. Has a projectile launcher as well, I believe. Lost that, Sam. So he's cool. Nice colorways. Talking another yellow, this is Sam's favorite. Sam always loves Shark the most, I think, because he loves yellow. And you can see he's worn out his nose and hair. Um, uh, Shark, Ollie, is our Cali kind of surfer dude. Very relaxed. Has a car that changed to boat. The figure came with this uh, kind of CPAC that had this sort of grabbable claw. Let's find that there. Here we go. Expect that to open more. Oh, it might have seized up a bit. Never mind. So that's Ollie. Very well played with. <laughs> and with Catalina, she was cool. I don't know what she came with. I have to look. Actually, I don't know whether I've got her in, uh, in pack. Hmm. She might be at work. This, I don't know whether this is actually Atom. I don't know what this is. It's cool though. Plugs in the back, like a little chopper. 
Not sure if that's Adam. Sam, as all kids, mix them up. And ah, here's the main man. So this is Axel Manning. This is your uh, your lead hero. This, he will grow up to be Action Man. So come, obviously they all come with helmets. Very street. Came with this uh, skate rider, skateboard. Again, missing the projectile fire turbine, but we'll see that in the uh, in the packs. Very cool. Look at him. <laughs> So let's start with season one packaging. Here you go. So you can see the Axel Manning um, key art on the left. On the top right is the Action Man Randall. On the side is where you get all the instructions. On the back, you have your character art and cross sell. And then, of course, you have the very interesting legal copy on the underside. That's season one. Let's check out some more. So the nemesis of the Atom team was Pain. He had his projectile launcher. Oh, funny little sticker. Don't need that. Back of pack. He was cool. Clancy Brown did the voice for him. He's awesome. So he was the main bad guy. We also did him in like a exclusive prison break, which is on episode one, which is how he gets out. You yeah, know all that, let's whip through that. It was pain. So he was the main bad guy character. Supporting him was flesh. He was massive, really heavy. This pack feels great. It's really weighty. Came with a spinning barbell. You could ratchet around and you know the rest. Well, whiz through that. Flesh, he was cool. And we had Mass. So Mass was this kind of concrete dude that had like a load of um, Play-Doh. You could squidge through it. <laughs> actually, yeah. yeah. Why don't, actually, why don't we open that? Why don't we find out what that's about? Last, but by no means least, Dragon as our Series 1 bad guys. Came with a roundhouse kick. Very cool character. Interesting uh, character art. Check him out. Series 1 into Series 2. Now, Season 2 packaging had a few changes. Basic structure was the same. Um, but you can see that the key art character had a change of clothes. And we took the instructions from the side and added illustrations. The instructions now went to the back. And we had the cross cell as well. And, oh, there we are. Still, those amazing legals on the bottom. So that's Season 2 packaging. Season 2 introduced a whole new set of bad guys, the Mew Teens. They got their own uh, key art alternative. Tillian, who is a leader, has a, uh, a stinging kind of like uh, scorpion backpack, which is really cool. And he was the leader of the Mew Teens, each of which were a counterpart to our heroes on the Atom team. They were, like, mutated. So I introduce you the, to some of them. There's Stingfly with his backpack. We got Rekka, who used to fire uh, street signs. And Razor with his uh, piranha. Oh, and Diesel. Diesel was this weird, very strange bad guy that kind of converted into a motorbike. The weirdest character I think we had in Atom, but he was really cool. This kind of like street dude. Now we did bring Atom to the US, but obviously we removed the Action Man um, on the logo because no one really knew what Action Man was. We updated the key art, and we also changed the Action Man Roundel to an Atom Roundel. It also included a DVD to help people kind of discover the brand a little bit more. You can see that in there. So this is Axel. I don't actually have him in um, Season 1, but um, it follows the same sort of structure. 
little updated backpack and some bios on the back for the American audience so they can get to know the characters. Really cool. It's nice to see them. Uh... Oh, oh, it's gone. The Lee Industries logo, which is my pretty my favorite logo. So here you can see how they compare and contrast. On the left is the Action Man Atom Pack and on the right is the North American Atom Only Pack. Now, you know, we in toys love to redeco existing sculpts and Atom was no real exception. So this is our Night Ops version where we've molded them in black and put these kind of really nice hot color piping on to give them that real techie look. The packaging is updated to have this sort of like night vision green. Pack comes with glow in the dark stickers that the kids can put on all their vehicles. Very, very cool. Yeah, confirmed. Glow in the dark. Correct. There's the team on the back. Very cool. Very cool. But not my favorite. This is my favorite pack. The collection pack. Alpha Teens of Landmark City with everything included. So there I have it. There is my um, impact collection that I have. I have some more back at the office. I think I've got the original Axel. I know I've got Catalina there as well. So um, I would need to go and dig those back out when I eventually get back into the office. Our team was also responsible for Star Guide creation, which we gave to our licensees to help them create any type of Action Man Atom product, whether it be comics, books, T-shirts, even the lunchbox that you saw that my son Sam had. As well as giving them the Star Guide, we also included this cool little early prototype of Axel as a little, little extra thrown in, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, let's check out what a Star Guide looks like. So a style guide will give the licensee a little bit of history on the story, main characters, places, give character art. It'll give lots of logos, lots of logos, background patterns, everything they need to create that product that they're doing. For the season two style guide, we certainly needed more pages than season one. <laughs> we had a bigger story to tell. We had to create new key art, new posters. There were new vehicles. There were new backgrounds. The, the characters had new costumes. So we had to kind of redraw everything with the new costumes. Um, whole new set of logos. We had to introduce assets that would um, be for the new team, the new bad guys led by Tillian. We also created a series of conflict images between Atom and the new team. So overall, a lot of love and effort went into this and I'm really, really proud of it. If you take a look at that figure that came with Star Guide 1, you can see it's an early iteration of what Axel could look like. A lot more street compared to where he actually turned out when he hit the shelves, which is a lot more armored and a lot more kind of heroic. Um, interesting little uh, little figure there. One for the collectors, I'm sure. As well as the toys and the TV show, the other most prevalent Atom item really was the comic book series. And that was drawn by my good friend, Jack Lawrence, who please check out his Instagram account, as you can see here. And Jack did a fantastic job bringing life and fun and brevity and brightness to the, uh, the Atom story. And I'm sure he inspired kids of all ages to go and try and draw Atom. Now, you know, I love it when kids do fan art and um, I don't know where I got this image from. I've had it with me for 15 years, but I've always kept it close because it just reminded me of why I do my job. Um, so, hey, Peter, you were seven from Exeter and Chris, you were 10 from Nottingham. If you're watching, listening, please reach out to me and let me know that you're doing OK. And I'd love to see your fan art now. As I was doing this episode, I couldn't resist a quick Google to see how much fan art there is out there still for Atom. And I was pleasantly surprised. Most of it centers around our Catalina Leone, our very own Lioness, which is fantastic. Alexandra Demchuk and Grace Smart Wolf, thank you so much for keeping the Atom Flame alive. Hopefully this will inspire, as well as this episode, inspire others to draw more Atom as fans going forward. Can't wait to Google in a few weeks' time to find out. So there you have it. There's your whistle stop tour of Action Man and Atom. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I know a lot of you probably didn't know much about it. It's a very specific uh, property, toy property in a very uh, distinct regions. Um, but go digging, go hunting, find out more. There's a load of stuff you can find out there in Google and there's fanpedias and wikipedias and all that kind of jazz. You can get the DVDs of Atom, go watch them, see if you like them. Feel free to ask me any questions if you have any. Um, you know, when I was finding out all the content and gathering it all together, I had a load of behind the scenes photography and concept sketches and models, etc., etc. But, you know, um, I work for Hasbro still and it wouldn't be appropriate to share it now. But who knows, in the future, maybe there'll be a retrospective of Action Man. Maybe I'll get permission to put it in my um, Mr. Stevie 18, the toy years, autobiography when I'm older and, uh, and grayer. Um, who knows? But for the meantime, I hope this has proved useful and informative for you. And I'll see you again on uh, episode three. So in the meantime, here's to Action Man, the greatest hero of them all. 
What time is it? Tick 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 giveaway time. So the giveaway for episode two of Mr. Stevie's Tall Toy Tall Toy Tall Tall Toy Tales. Ah, I've regressed clearly. Is this North American version of Axel Mint on card? Um, also comes with his cool uh, souped up skateboard and a DVD of Atom Alpha Teens or Machine. So if you still have a DVD player, you can check it all out and uh, maybe you'll become a new fan. Who knows? But anyway, to win this, please do these following things. Number one, like this IGTV episode, then tag a friend in the comments and also answer this question. What is the name of the leader of the Mew team? I repeat, what is the name of the leader of the Mew team? The answer is somewhere in this episode, and don't worry if you don't get the spelling exactly right, I will be forgiving. Anyway, good luck with that. I will randomly select a winner on Sunday, I think this week we'll do this. And there they are. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, good luck with the giveaway, and I'll see you next time. If you are interested in finding more about Action Man in general, then please check out these two cool websites. We have www.actionman.com and www.actionmanhq.co.uk. I have no idea if I have to say www. at the beginning of every website anymore. <laughs> Clearly, I am stuck in the mid 2000s. Anyway, check them out if you want to find out more. Bum, 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 bum. That's your lot, so bugger off home.